Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. In this episode of Everything Music, we're going to talk about jazz licks for rockers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a couple licks. One's by John Schofield and the other's by Michael Brecker, who's a saxophone player that you should know. And show you how to play over one chord like these guys do. Now they're using some chromaticism or outside playing. And I'm going to describe to you what they're doing in their lines. These are very typical of the kind of lines that they play when they play outside, especially over one chord. So the first thing we're going to do is the John Schofield riff, which is over a C-sharp 7 or C-sharp minor chord. And it goes like this. Let's watch Schofield play it again. Okay, so let me go over this lick slowly with the tab. The lick starts out in the C-sharp minor blues scale, which is here at the 12th fret. And it goes like this. One and two. Let's check out the tab again and try it again slowly. One and two. Let me play a little bit more up to tempo. One and two. Let's watch Schofield play it again. Okay, let me talk about what he's doing in this. Uh, he's using some sub changes. This is where he gets the chromaticism from. And the lick can go over a C-sharp 7 chord, or a C-sharp minor 7 chord, or a straight C-sharp minor chord. Or it could be like a Dorian kind of sound. You could use it over a C-sharp minor 11, or a... C, C sharp minor 13, okay? He starts out in a C sharp minor blues scale. He goes up to the flat third. Then he starts out as if it's Dorian. He's using that the flat he's using that flat five like a blues scale, but then going to the 13th, it would be C sharp Dorian, or it could be C sharp 13. And then the sub changes start down a half step from that under the flat sixth, playing part of an A minor scale, right? The first five notes of an A minor scale. Then he goes back into key, back to the fifth of that. C sharp chord, so. And then he goes right up as if he's thinking a G sharp minor. So. And then he goes to the flat nine. If you think about surrounding this flat six. So all those notes are out of key with it. He starts on the flat nine. So he's really, he's really, uh, um, this is all a half step above the key that he's in. Okay, he's still, that's the major seven on that chord there. So it's what we call chromatic sidestepping here. So he goes. Now he's he's going in as if he's implying a C sharp seven chord. And he's in a C sharp major pentatonic, and then he goes. That's a C straight C sharp seven. So one more time, let me go over it, and I want you to watch the tab with it. I'll play it slow again. One and two.
Okay, I want you to check out this next lick. This is Mike Brecker. He's going to play a lick that's very stylistically typical of his outside playing, and this is going to be over a G7 chord. He's playing really kind of a G altered sound. I want you to check it out, and then we're going to learn it. I'm going to add a little bit to the end of it. Here it is. Let's check it out again. Okay, let me show you some of the stuff he's doing in this, along with the tab. He starts out with an F minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio. Now, if you remember, if you think of G altered, you got... If I play an F minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio over a G7 altered chord, the, all those notes are from the G altered scale. So he goes... And then... He goes down an E flat major chord from the from the fifth. And then he goes down down a G minor seven flat five. So he's going. All that is right up. And then he goes. So this is another part of G alter. He's going from the uh, sharp five, flat five, third to the root. Then he does a sub change here and he goes down an F sharp minor seven arpeggio. And then he goes back to that other leg. And then I add this at the end. I'm gonna play it slow for you again. Here we go. Two, three, four. Play a little faster. Three, four. Uh, in part of it, I'm using the major seventh. I'm implying a G major seven or G Lydian. I'm going seven root, third, sharp four. Then I come back to G altered. So I have a little bit of outside playing. Most of it's G altered, except for the F sharp, F sharp minor seven. And then, and then I go into G Lydian for a brief second. Then I'm back to G altered. Okay, now let me play this lick with the uh, with a chord with a pad, the pad's gonna have the third, the seventh, and the root. Check it out. Three, four. Let me see if I can play a little faster. Okay, let's hear the opening of the lick played by the true boss, Michael Brecker. Let's check it out again. So there's two different types of ways that you can play outside that are demonstrated here between Michael Brecker and John Schofield. Both of them are actually playing substitute chord changes over, but John Schofield is doing some ch chromaticism using the pentatonic scale a half step above and below the scale that he's playing over. So if you're playing over in a C-sharp minor pentatonic, we call it sidestepping. So if you're playing, you can play... So I'm doing, I'm going to the pentatonic scale a half step above. So I did... I'm going up to here, to this pentatonic, which is a D minor pentatonic, and then I'm sidestepping back into C sharp, then back to uh, C minor pentatonic. It's finding creative ways to get between the two. So those kind of things, using that uh, chromatic sides stepping, coming up with your own lines that work actually will give your playing a lot more interest because um, 
it offers you a way to play outside and kind of create tension and then resolve it. It's just a matter of kind of coming up with your own licks. Okay, so one of the other things that you can do with this basic pentatonic scale, let's say C-sharp minor, is to combine the Dorian mode and the Mixolydian mode. We've talked about this in past videos, but what I want you to do is kind of see where these notes are in relation to the pattern and how to use them. Let's say I start the scale from here. And then instead of going up here to B, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna slide my first finger there because those notes from the Dorian scale are right below. Okay, that's the the second to the flat third and the sixth to the flat seven. And then you got So here here is the ninth, here's the thirteenth. So those give you that that sound, that Dorian sound. So if you wanna add those notes to your licks. I went up. Right? That's how you use how you use those fill-in notes. So these are places that you can get your playing to sound more jazz-like and use chromaticism. You can't just run chromatics because it's boring. You have to actually... So I go... I'm using those Dorian notes, but I'm using some chromaticism. Or... So that's right based out of that. right out of that, that scale there. Also, in the same position, if you make it Mixolydian, you're playing over C7 chord, well, there's your 2-5 uh, that you can play G minor 7 to C7 right there in that same position. There's your G. If I, play, if I look for my G minor 7, this is one of the things that Brecker played right in his solo. So I played G minor seven, C nine. That's right. Okay. So finding those positions. So there, I got the G minor seven, or you can go to C minor too, right? So it's good to know where these arpeggios are in relation to this, your stock blues pattern to find those extra notes to add color to your solos and also to use some chromatic fill-in notes to fill in. You fill in here from the 11th chromatically down to the flat third. Then I play the fifth and then the ninth down to the root. Or you don't have to play straight chromatic. You can go instead of you go, which is something that Stevie Ray Vaughan would do. Or a lot of people don't think about bending into the ninth. But the ninth is a great note to bend into, and it will give you more of a jazz flavor because those notes you're not expecting to hear in your standard rock playing. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, which has a ton of licks like this in it, you can write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.